Hey guys and welcome back. I think this video will be the last one covering this particular area. I think we've, we've spent enough time with this on, on screen. But uh, there's still some work to be done here that I might as well might as well record as I'm doing it. So um, since last video I I once again went in and, and changed the, the, the shape of this pit. I can't seem to quite quite decide how I how I want it to look. I I, I felt the previous um, sort of um, railing looked a little too brutal, so so I went in and changed it to something like like this, where it, it actually cl more closely resembles the 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 rails that are found on the on the dam. I think this looks better, and uh, and um, I, I still think it fits sits quite nicely in, in the terrain like this. Uh, and then I, I I tweaked this area a little bit, added like a small path here. Like if you if you imagine like someone someone sort of working around this area and they want to go in this direction, then then uh, over time there would have been like a path uh, forming over here. Uh, you just have to sort of imagine people living and working in these places and like wait, how 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 would how would stuff like this come about? And I I think. I think this this looks quite nice. This is usually how I sort of how I imagine and and develop these areas. When when if you look at this bigger base here, you have all these small paths sort of running between the 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 buildings, and you kind of imagine like okay, so how how, how would how would one Coming down these stairs, how would they actually go? If if how would they how would they walk if they were to 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 walk to the the main building and then you have these small paths sort of forming, <clears throat> and so that's kind of what I did. Uh, but then I experimented a little bit in Blender with what these what these funnel towers could look like, and I came came to something like this where you have like a uh, a slightly larger sort of funnel ring with with these um, stabilizers or whatever they are uh, sticking out from from them, and and then you have these kind of modular um, supports. Like these are all individual pieces; they can be moved moved. Uh, however, the the terrain requires. So, for example, here the second one. Uh, uses like one one ninety degree angle and another forty five degree angle because with with just forty five degree angles this this uh, support here would be very very close to the edge. I think this this looks kind of weird and sort of almost like haphazardly put together. Like we can imagine these people uh, using sort of off the shelf parts that they brought down from from the ship um, and. And use them to just build these these towers uh, out of out of what they had at the moment. Uh, before then, uh, moving to these bigger ones, and and <clears throat> obviously these bigger ones are still very much um, um, white box uh, models. These these are just here to sort of give you an idea and scale of what this bigger system uh, would look like. We still have this this third tower here that we need to actually. Um, exchange with this this new model. I think it, I think it works quite well. Um, it did get a, a, a little larger, like this actual like tunnel fu or funnel ring here. Um, and of course, I also made it so that you can you can now rotate this however you want. So I think that that looks that looks quite nice. <clears throat> So um, let's actually um, let's replace this this tower uh, with with a new one, and then perhaps we can actually go into Blender and 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 UV unwrap these, just so that we can get some like very very base colors applied to them. I'm pretty happy with with this design now. I think this is probably going to be what I'm going going with for for this old system. I can then go in later and, and paint uh, like decay and, and rust and 
and whatnot onto the texture but but we can just UV map them here in this video so that we can get actual actual color on the different parts of it and, and it should look actually a lot nicer Okay, um, so let's just get rid of, of this one, this, copy of the older tower that I added there. And um, <clears throat> I think like the easiest way to actually get this third tower lined up now that we can actually rotate those parts is we we add a new layer for it. Oh, what? What happened? Like you could you could actually see uh, all of those names on top of each other, and then they disappear. That has to be a bug in this component that I'm using. I've never seen that before. Okay. Um, anyway, we get this one, and we duplicate it and we move it to this new layer here and the name doesn't really matter but it kind of bothers me that it's number two okay um, and and then now that it's sort of oriented the way we want we can actually just just move it in local space um, to to the right position and previously these these uh, towers were sort of just hand placed here which means that as you can see this this old one doesn't exactly sit in the middle of the of the new new funnel so we can just get rid of that this should now be be in an in a in a perfect straight line it's not exactly sure if they if they point um, to the to the ship, but I mean the ship is supposed to be very very large, like enormous. Anyway, actually we can probably we can just go have a look at it um, if we can select the thing. Um, this is not of course exactly to scale, but uh, if if you if you put a, a a scale mannequin on on onto this guy, you, you can see that it's actually like. Quite, quite large, something like that. Um, that's that's roughly. Yeah, the depth doesn't work with this because it's it's rendered on a different different layer. But but anyway, like um, this this thing is supposed to be really really huge, and um, there are actually a number of those ships in the lore. Uh, only only one of which is is sort of. In such a bad shape that it, it can't land on the planet and um, it so it doesn't exactly matter where this transporter sort of um, aims at the ship if you will because it's so big that you could just imagine that at, like right over there they have some some sort of port that they can actually ship and receive things with this system so that's that's good. Um, and now then, we have to decide how we want those supports uh, to to look and how they fit onto the terrain. But much like much like previously, we should be able to just actually get that. Maybe we can do it with like two forty-five degree ones. Let's let's try that. Oh, actually, yeah. Now we can't actually do that because, yeah, um, yeah, the angle of the funnel is not the same as as the actual, like the angle of the funnel is not forty five degrees. So the easiest way is actually just to to copy this uh, transform and then go to to this and 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 just align it with that and. Now we get the the fixture in the correct place, but it's not necessarily 
correctly um, rotated. Um, so you would want to have it in, in, in like a 45 degree angle now and of course that's kind of tricky to do. Uh, you, your options are essentially either to to just you know place it here and and reset the orientation and then try to actually um, match it with this or to to uh, copy the the transform from a rotation of this guy and then try to match it with the or with the terrain but I think this should be should be okay so let's let's pull this down a little bit and as we can see we're not exactly matching that uh, that rotation now so yeah let's rotate it a little bit more i mean this is going to be quite small on the player screen anyway this is it's kind of like a back background uh, prop so it doesn't these things don't generally matter that much that they are like absolutely matched up uh, the first one is much more important because the player will be able to actually uh, drive right up to it essentially so we'll copy that one and, and add another one here something like that how does it look from down here I think it's it's quite fine. We should perhaps move it move it up a little bit, and I think we should be able to do that if we if we select this one last, or is it perhaps first? Yeah, it's first. If you select it first, then the local transform is taken from that object, so we can just move it here, and and, and we can know that it's still aligned with those other ones perfectly. <coughs> So then we take that one and we copy its transform and we add these these bases uh, like so, and then we, we still need uh, the vertical parts, which is essentially just a uh, oh, not that uh, essentially just uh, a big cylinder. And, and these are made deliberately very long so that you can use the same thing you can just go go in, into the ground like this it doesn't matter uh, the same thing is used for example here so you don't have to make unique models for all of these places and uh, well that's kind of weirdly offset actually uh, yeah maybe we actually do want to to fix that up, I think that's that's kind of silly. So let's go into Blender. We, we're going to need Blender anyway in in a second, and we can go to the base. You can see that yeah, the base is actually like down there. And to top it off, its its origin is offset a little bit. So I don't know where where do we want the the world origin to be. It doesn't it doesn't exactly matter because we have to tweak them all individually anyway. Um, while we're at it, we can we can make these things smooth. So, uh, as you can see here, um, most of these are shaded flat. You can see the individual faces. Only the only the fixtures here are actually like the, this part and and this part are are shaded smooth. And that's actually what we want. But we we need to um, we need to make sure that we have the sharp edges set up correctly it should be as simple as turning that on and and just shading this smooth this is a very very simple part and we can just get rid of of that face and we'll come back to this and and UV unwrap it in a bit so Export that, and now all the bases should be should be 
offset wrong. Oh, and I, I did the same thing again as I did previously, where, um, let's see if we can go here and mini transporter actually use without realizing it. I used the, the name suggested by Blender, it's supposed to be tower base, that's what we want. And now all the, the bases should be offset, and they are, so let's go in and fix these first. Um, yeah, and the, like we've um, discussed previously, uh, when you when you move something around, the the engine doesn't actually update the bounds. I should I should just make it so that they do that. But uh, you can just reload the back end, and then it it will fix it up for you. And reloading the back end essentially just means um, like the the game is essentially acting as a sort of um, as the backend for this editor, so this this program that you see here with with the UI is actually a separate EXE than than what is actually rendering this this stuff, and uh, um, the the game is is the one who is rendering this and who's actually doing the the the, the majority of the of the editing itself, like modifying the data and loading the level and saving the level and etc. And uh, and that's why you can actually see you can see this um, this output here. This is coming directly from the game itself, uh, and it uh, it allows you to to like see what what the game exe uh, writes to the to the output. And, and th this is why like every time you open the the editor, you 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 get this window as well, um, unless you specify that you don't want it. <clears throat> that's that's very handy. So, reloading the backend essentially just means that the editor stays on. This this UI application stays on, but but we we um, shut down and and restart the 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 game in the background, and that reloads certain things that that don't get updated otherwise. Okay, I think probably actually makes makes sense and looks better if these uh, bases are kind of following the the terrain so they can be at, at like slightly different angles but uh, we're going to want to actually have a, a thorough look at this terrain here this piece of of terrain to see see what it's supposed to look like so let's not spend too much time on that currently And just pull these guys down. Like so. Okay. So now we have the, the, the new the new funnels. And I think I think this looks looks quite cool. Um, let's actually get a, a gamepad here. You can, you can move the camera with the gamepad as well in the in the editor and, and if you kind of if you imagine the player driving this way, like they can, they can already see the, the the weird towers here, and they're like, "What? What is that?" And when they when they come this way, like this, these look kind of imposing and strange. So I I kind of like this approach here, where obviously this will be partially obscured by by trees and, and stuff that's that we will put right next to it, but. Still, these are quite visible, and they don't f flicker as badly as the as the old ones. I mean, they flicker a little bit now with the, the default material that has like very very large contrast between like shadow and and light. But yeah, I think this will look quite nice. This will work quite well. Okay, um, so. So let's do some of these other parts and and, and uh, shade these uh, smooth as well. So we want we actually do want the ends of these guys because as um, you can you can see sort of a part of it here. So I'm just gonna leave them there. It's it's a, like the easiest way to just make it so that so that uh, uh, you, you you get a you get a face there. Don't get any holes. And here we actually see that the the angle is not quite enough here. So we have to 
I have to make it larger. Let's just make it like 45 to be to be safe. And that looks okay. So that's the 90 degree turn, and then we have the 45 degree. And same thing with that. And then we do the vertical one, which is again, it's just a, a cylinder. Probably the most uninteresting part of this whole structure. And now we're starting to see things actually being being sort of smooth. So these are supposed to be uh, like steel, old old steel um, like towers, pipes. Maybe maybe these bases uh, are are concrete, um, just like like these here, these ones here. Uh, haven't quite decided yet. Right, and now we get to the to the most complex one, which is this funnel here. And um, so we can just shade it smooth, and then uh, then we go in here and uh, well, we turn on auto smooth first of all. And that should get us pretty far. Uh, so we have these things here that we want. We clearly want that one and that one to be. Uh, um, to be sharp, so now that looks that looks correct. We have the other one as well, right? So now we have those, and then we have we have these. These are slightly lower poly, so the angle doesn't quite work. So let's put it to forty-five. That's probably going to give us some problems. Like I want these these beveled edges here to be sharp so I'm gonna have to f to do something about that it does fix these though so maybe we'll actually just go in and and, and uh, we should be able to do I think this just select these faces right There should be eight of them, and then then we select more, so to speak, and we we mark um, mark these sharp, and that should do it. Um, and then then we have these ones as well. So how do we actually want to shade this? I haven't quite decided yet. These can probably be smooth. Uh, I think I want I want this one to be sharp. Um, maybe that one as well. Yeah, I'm 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 not sure actually. Maybe maybe these should be actually sharp, like this, and and then. You have to kind of imagine like okay what what is this like actually made of and I think in, in a case like this it actually makes sense that this is this is made of some like I don't know hard plastic or, or, or something and and these things just tend to, to have sharp corners. And this this should be round and that's that's correct. Something like that. Maybe this can be actually smooth. Yeah, let's go with that. And so, same thing for this one. Actually, all of all of this, uh, all of this is to be marked sharp. Let's focus on that one so that we can. Rotate the camera around it easily. That's sharp, and we have that one is sharp, and also that one. And yeah, maybe that's maybe that's good. Does it does this look weird now? That should this actually be sharp? Should that one be sharp? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, 
maybe it, maybe it looks it looks more kind of unified if they are all sharp. We have this 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 big shape here and these ones that, that sort of break up the 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 hardness uh, these these ones as well. So I I, I think it, it will probably look look okay even if these are marked as sharp. It doesn't look too too angly. So let's do that and we called it the tower funnel. Right. So now the, the lighting is, is sort of smooth and nice across it. And these one look look truly round, etc. Cool. Okay, um, this one still looks straight and nice and and points at the ship. Okay, so what's the next part then? We could we could unwrap that now if we wanted to. Um, and that would that would give us the the possibility to like add a little bit of color to these guys. They are kind of the center, center like of, of this whole set piece. So in a way, it would make sense. It it can be a bit difficult to to actually decorate this area if the if the main well the, this this one as well. But <clears throat> but this one's going to require more effort because I want to sculpt stuff on sculpt things on, 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 on it. I don't think I need to sculpt anything on this. Uh, these, um, since these are made of steel, it's kind of um, not that probable that like pieces have come off them and, and whatnot. I could still I could still do it, but I, I, I usually don't. Like the art style I'm going for doesn't really require it. Like uh, I usually don't sculpt my vehicles either. These are these are sort of allowed to look a little, little simple. While um, materials like this, here you can see, for example, there's a there's a piece that has been, has been like a, a little bit of damage has been sculpted here, and I think also here um, because concrete sort of tends to look quite unnatural un unless it's a little irregular. While things made out of steel doesn't really need that. Like here you can see for, for example on this on this um, power pile on here um, I painted a little bit of, of like wear and tear on it and, and some like dirt but but otherwise it's it's kind of uh, in, 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 in some pretty in, in a pretty good shape uh, doesn't, doesn't require any any like pieces coming off or anything like that. One thing we could do, of course, if we wanted to, was that now, now that these are sort of modular and, and you can just pull them apart like this, we, we could, of course, make it so that so that this lower tower uh, has started falling together. Maybe these people have like actually taken this off and, and, and it would, would now be lying here. Um, oh, damn. Like this funnel is, li is lying here against these these rocks and and and, uh, and you know let's explore this a little bit this was actually sort of my original idea or shall we say it was the idea that i've been thinking about for the past few days uh, it, it would look something like this you know you have this you have these sort of parts scattered around the place slightly inside the ground something like this and um, well, yeah, that looks weird because they're facing the same direction. But whatever, you get the idea. Um, this could look okay as well if we if we went this way. But um, 
these are supposed to be kind of sturdy and robust so uh, I don't think they, they it would have sort of c come to pieces uh, by itself and like if this one that's standing on the on the hill has survived then why wouldn't this have done it maybe they maybe they needed pieces parts from this or something and, and just took it took it apart and then we can we can redo my changes and, and see what that would look like and yeah yeah it, it it's not bad either but uh, I still think I'm gonna go with the tower being intact because I think it looks quite quite weird and interesting and it makes it more clear to the to the player that what this is about if if we have more of these towers aligned and forming this straight path to the ship it's about about readability in this case readability of the of the scene and the set piece so yeah let's let's keep it like this for now we can we can always break it later if we want to or we can we can actually just you know we can we can duplicate one of these and and, and have like a spare one lying somewhere close by or something like that like in a, in a pile of pile of garbage somewhere uh, might be kind of interesting we should probably use the fact that that we have these sort of in modular form now in some way and, and that, that would typically mean like using these parts and like sort of scattering them around so let's let's perhaps add, add some of these parts I'm, I'm thinking mainly about this funnel one like these these are so interesting but mainly the funnel, funnel one can be can be lying somewhere. Uh, yeah, one one important thing to remember here is that uh, you have this lightning bolt on these two layers, and this one doesn't. That actually just means that it isn't set to auto load. So you have certain, and that's just a, a layer that's actually never supposed to load, but because it's for for development only but but the mission one for example this is these are the layers that that store the mission uh, objects and, and they're not set to auto load because um, you don't want the mission to start uh, every time you you play the level it's only supposed to to play if you actually play through the through the game campaign itself so by pressing new game in the main menu for example and that's why they don't they don't load you have to load them specifically but for the mini transporter tower number three we do want it to auto load because otherwise this these objects won't be there when you load the level <clears throat> okay so let's go into blender and and unwrap these things now it should be a pretty pretty straightforward deal um, Let's see how, how we how we go about doing this. <clears throat> um, first of all, we can we can turn off the sharp edges because we'll be wanting to add seams here instead. And um, yeah, this is this is a part where the more experienced Blender users among you will probably probably point and laugh at me trying to to do uv unwrapping it's, it's not it's not my it's not the area where i'm i'm the most experienced but let's see um yeah let's let's start start with these these are probably the mo the most complex objects of the whole whole model or set of models i think will be actually will be like grouping all of these together into one one texture space so let's um, let's mark a seam, and maybe we'll actually want to just just do one and then delete this one and and move move it down. 
Hmm. I mean, I could even, if I really wanted to, I could even use some kind of modifier. But probably not, because I might want to, might want these in different parts of the texture so that I can paint like different different um, uh, different um, details on them and 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 wear and tear and whatnot. <coughs> So okay, let's 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 think about this. Like this top part will sort of fold out. So that's going to be a seam, seam like that, and then and then the, the, there's probably going to be a seam along along the bottom of it, something like this. Nope, not that. So that, and then we'll need to probably cut it here as well right and maybe hmm, how do we actually how do we cut this most efficiently yeah let's cut there as well see see what we get and um, and then then we do essentially the same with this. So we go along the bottom of this piece. And cut it open. And we'll, we'll definitely want seams there and probably there as well, right? Um, so let's go in here and into work. I'm, I'm, I'm typically typically what I do is is I add a folder for for the different texture atlases that I want to actually create and in this case we want to create one texture atlas for the whole funnel tower so let's add a, a, a folder here called funnel tower textures and again this is in in, in a work folder so these are textures that that uh, that won't be included in the game you can just store whatever you want inside the work folder and it's it's not going to be included um, and let's split the view a little bit we can add a a shader editor here and and uh, and add a new material there we go uh, and we'll call this this material uh, material funnel tower and we don't do any fancy principle B bsdf we just do a diffuse bsdf and we drag it to the th to the thing and we can en and enable and here we can we can already like play around with the colors this is just basic this basic blender um, material management which I'm sure many of you are more more um, experienced with than me. But let's see. So new, and how, how big do we want it to be? We can always scale it down later in in the in the game engine. Like here, for example, if you go go and have a look at uh, at the texture, whatever. Like maybe a dam, for example. Uh, so we have. We have damn diffuse, um, and and this is a 4K texture, and we can we can set like MIP levels, target width, and height minus one. Just means like, uh, you know, don't don't do anything. Like just bring it over. So this will actually get exported as a 4K texture into the game. But we can we can we can downscale it here if we want to set the target width of of like 2K or or 1K or something, while still keeping the source texture. Uh, high, and so I think I think these funnel towers will probably they can make do with with the the one K texture solution, but maybe we'll actually create these source textures as two K. Just that we can go we can go back up if we if we need to. So just like that, and um, and. Uh, what do we want here? Maybe we actually 
let's actually start with with just a UV grid. Um, so that's a UV grid, or do we actually want a color grid? Let's do a UV grid, no, no alpha. Um, and, and now we can save the this one, and we can just save it straight into the work folder. That's fine. So do UV grid, and, and this is this is going to look bad. Obviously, we haven't unwrapped anything yet. So so let's do that. Let's. Uh, well, we can take everything and just unwrap it, and and we we, we want to concentrate on this part still because that's the one we're working with, and we can see that oh, it doesn't it doesn't work yet. It doesn't unwrap like we have this weird weird texture distortion here. We need a few more seams there at least, um, and uh, maybe actually even here, right? Let's unwrap it again, and that looks better. Now we got rid of this this weird texture stretching here. Um, so so let's let's start with that. Let's keep that, and uh, I want to mark a seam there, and then probably I think that's that's the most occluded part, and we can just unwrap it again. And yeah, now this is like starting to come together quite nicely. These are places where you, you're, you're seeing like the texture islands coming together at different angles. Uh, there's a little bit of texture distortion here. Can we do something about that? Like, um, let's, uh, oh, let's look at the, the UV editor and select uh, just that one, right? And then. We'll want to have a have a look at at probably only those parts. So let's hide that then. And, and actually, we can fake a user for the UV grid and then remove that. It's easier to see what we're dealing with. Okay, so we have some overlapping things there. That's not good. We need to get rid of those and, and here as well. So it doesn't work quite as, quite as well as I originally thought. Uh, in addition, we have a little bit of, of stretching here. Okay. Okay. Um, so, maybe we'll actually we'll, we'll, we'll cut this. Uh, we don't, probably don't need to cut that. Alright. Unwrap that. So, and that looks better. We still have this uh, this UV stretching here, and that's probably because of, of, of this one, I think, and and that one. Mm, well, not not only those. It would seem. Where do we cut to ease this? Need to help out. Actually, yeah, there actually isn't any stretching. It's just that that the blender is clearly. If you look at it from this angle, blender is clearly adding an edge here. Um, if we look at it from above. There's there's actually very little stretching, and we can probably, if we open this one and and view, uh, where was it? Oh, it's it's, it's here actually. Uh, display stretch. There's, there's literally no stretching there, or or very little. So that's fine. I mean, this is a very small detail on screen anyway. So that's fine. Uh, we might want to tessellate this differently, but. But one thing at a time. Let's go to this other other place here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's go to these areas here and have a look at them. So, 
So it is like it's this one, right? Yes. And this was this one has both put some some weird stretching here as, as well as overlapping uh, parts. So we might want to cut here and here. And I got rid of the stretching, but we still have the overlapping parts. And it, it does make sense if you think about it like this 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 whole side sort of it falls here and like falls out and, and this one does as well and then this sort of comes on top of, of the whole thing. So uh, let's just make it easy for, for ourselves and, and just cut that out into into its own island. And that's that's gonna fix it for us. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so that took a bit of time, but that's probably the most complex part of the whole whole model. The rest should be fairly straightforward. Um. Oh, yeah, we we did we did hide the rest of the of the model. So with this, I think I'm just um these kinds of rings are a little. A little wasteful when it comes to like UV space, obviously, but we can probably fit things in inside of them. So maybe we don't need to care that they are these like hollow hollow rings and just mark seams. We'll we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens. And then um, let's let's hide these um, seams. We'll put like one there. And we can hide them probably. Let's actually do do it here instead. So we have seams there and then there and there. And then on the outside, where do we want to hide the seam? Well, we obviously want to hide the seam under these guys. Let's hide that, put a seam there. And uh, hide, hide that and put a seam there. And we still need to remember to actually fix up that other um, stabilizer or whatever it is. Um, and now now we're talking, now it looks a lot better. And yeah, this is what I was talking about with, with this, um, these rings sort of wasting a lot of space because it, maybe there's a setting or something that I don't know about, but it doesn't, doesn't seem to like automatically put things inside of those. And that's quite wasteful. Okay. That looks all right. And then what about these these pads on the inside? Um yeah, these are kind of lazily made. I essentially just took like a, a an, an an edge uh, or a face like this and just just like extruded it and, and like added added some pebbles and whatnot uh, so these are not the most elegant way of, of doing this we're, we're wasting a little bit of U, UV space uh, like like this because we have this whole back side but you can actually only see the, the sides here Probably doesn't matter. Probably doesn't matter. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Um, but let's select all of these back faces. Back face. Back face. Back face. And back face. And. Uh, Mark seam, and then, then we'll we'll want to select all the all the beveled edges here, and mark seam, and and, and now this should give us like a, pr a pretty good UV unwrapping for for this this guy. So we'll want to do the same for all of these. And maybe 
actually we'll use this mode instead so that we can clearly see whoop not that one we can clearly see what we're doing I might want to get like a, a better mic stand. I, I I think the my clickings and, and tappings on the keyboard are quite visible or, or visible but audible the current current mic stand because it's like a desk desk based one. And it also gets a little bit in the way if I ever want to like type something while I'm recording or streaming. Not that I stream ever, because I don't really have that kind of audience, but... Uh, oh, damn, that's not what I wanted to do. Sharp. Uh, what did I do? I probably cleared sharp, right? So yeah, I might want to get get like a better, better mic holder, like on an arm. But yeah, priorities, priorities. Okay. So that's that. And now if we unwrap this, we should have should, uh, should have essentially... Uh, yeah, these, these are actually not... These don't... These don't work very well. This big one is probably the just the this receiver here that or the stabilizer that doesn't work but this um, whatever you call these fixtures here I probably actually want to have a seam there as well um, yeah and now it now it's giving me essentially what I expected where these straight ones actually get straight get mapped straight into the UV space and, and these this one that can't be mapped straight, it's probably like the, these ones. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, so, maybe what we'll do is we'll take, we'll take this one and say hasta la vista to you and then just duplicate this one and use the 3d cursor as the origin and rotate around the x 180 degrees and that gives us a beautiful uv unwrapped model so if you are a a UV unwrapping aficionado. Do let me know how well I did. I probably didn't do too well considering I have the, these things here. I mean, we can just easily cut these, cut these into pieces that that compress better. If we want to, I don't know. Do we do we want to do that? Um, we have these these places that. We already sort of, already kind of hiding these seams pretty well. So maybe we actually want to do that. And, and yeah, it doesn't change very much uh, yet. But on the other hand, like the, these, these, uh, these should probably not be uh so large anyway because they're occupying quite a, a small amount of space but there's not yeah i don't know i don't know i have no idea actually i wouldn't want to put a, a seam here on this ball just because that, that would be quite visible so i don't know maybe we can fit some some like or well i'm sure we can fit some some details here uh by hand later if we want to 
and we have these other pieces to do as well. Um, let's save this and just move on to the next one. Um, this, this, these other pieces should be actually very, very quick to, to do. So we can just select that material and uh, I'll simply do mark seam and mark seam and how do we how do we unwrap this one yes interesting how do we unwrap this one actually um let's get rid of the other one there's there's bound to be a little bit of stretching involved right because because of the shape that this is in if we just unwrap it now it doesn't know what to do at all And if we like, if we do something like this, uh, it actually unwraps it quite well. But as you can see, there's there's a little bit of stretching. Like the the, the lighter the color, the more stretch there is. Maybe there's like a standard way for unwrapping shape like this I assume this is a pretty pretty common shape to have but I don't I don't know what that would be and I don't want to check it on Google for it right now so let's just try a few things I mean this is this is probably quite quite good enough for for our use for these kinds of pieces now but it doesn't feel like it's like particularly good I mean we have we have these let's actually let's turn this off we have these parts that are sort of straight so they should they should probably benefit from being actual straight straight parts of it and we can can even clear those seams right so now we have only have this this smaller part here that that sort of gets a little stretched in places yep I, I, I don't know I don't know Uh, maybe something like that. <clears throat> Again, it's probably it's probably good enough for our our needs. So let's let's just do that and and get on with with our lives. So we we'll want to see him there, and we we'll want to see him there, and there, and there, and remember that these these edge um, like the end end. Uh, faces are actually important here what what did we do here we we cut the middle part in two pieces and the straight ones in, in one piece or in one part along one one edge so let's do that and then and then cut the other one here uh no 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 that's what i want to do And of course, we need to assign them the material to it. Otherwise, it won't give give us any nice UV grids to look at. Yeah, I'm not super proud about those things, but it is what it is. Let's let's move on with our lives. Okay, so this one is is probably quite easy. We mark a seam there and we just select a random edge and mark a seam. I mean that's 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 really the only way you can do it, right? As far as I know. Um Nope, no 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 not that that one. And then you unwrap it. There we go. Yeah, it sort of bugs me that this this is actually only straight, like opposite the 
opposite the seam. But that really is the only way to do it, as far as I know. Uh, we have the fixture, which is, and uh, this is a slightly more complicated, but not, not that much more complicated. But let's do this one first, because this is arguably the easiest one. Since this is a straight, just sort of boom or beam, or girder, whatever, pipe. Uh, and, and actually, this one doesn't need these ends. Like, this is supposed to go inside the other ones. So actually, let's, let's clear the seams and let's actually delete the, the faces as well. So this one just needs one, one seam like this. And now we have the fixture. Um, the fixture is also like <clears throat> it goes inside these these ones. Um, if we want to like scatter these pieces around, we'll, we'll want to actually have something there though. So maybe we'll leave this because this is this is much more interesting to have have lying around as a piece than, than like these these vertical like straight lines. I don't think I'll, I'll ever just put one of these. Maybe I'll put one of those. So let's keep the let's keep the end face there. Won't cost us much. And now then, well that's that is clearly going to be a seam, right? Oh, it didn't do it all the way around. So that's going to be a seam. And and this is going to be a seam. It's difficult to see it with the, with the white material so let's turn that off and do like this so that's going to be a seam and then probably that's going to be a seam and, and all the way around as well let's not take any shortcuts so that's going to be a seam and then one of these sides is going to be a seam all the way around and the other one is going to have seams this way and we can keep those things together i think i think this makes sense and then that's going to be a seam, and that's going to be a seam, and that that should be. Oh, so now we can see actually like this has crazy distortion, and that is of course because we didn't we didn't cut this at any point. So let's just cut it right there, and and now you can see that it's it's quite fine. Um, we do have a bit of distortion here. Let's actually look at what would this look like with the UV grid. Mm, yeah, there's a little bit of distortion. You can see some squares there here that aren't quite squares. Maybe we should should cut some some relief seams in here or something. Not all the way. I think I think we want to we want to keep it still attached to the UV island. Yeah, there. <coughs> a lot less stretching now that that looks fine so let's let's keep it like that okay and that that should be everything UV UV mapped then how wonderful and now I think this is not something that I do very often but I think we can select everything we can unwrap everything like this and and this gives us everything inside the same UV space which is is what we wanted except we have these places here where we're we're wasting UV space so let's try to get rid of that let's see there's this option to pack islands but this doesn't uh, it, it it doesn't have the guts to fill those in yeah that's kind of kind of annoying so if we just as a test if we do this we cut there and then we cut there 
and there, and there. I can do that by hand, but I, I don't, I don't want to do that by hand if I don't have to. Like this, this already looks better. Well, I do wonder if we actually, if we really suffer by having like a, a seam here. Probably not. Uh, maybe we'll actually just be happy with this. We can probably pack them a little tighter though. So something like this. That should be fine. And now of course, now we have to um, you have to export everything again. Uh, so yeah, maybe maybe we'll just do that and I'll export this. So that would be the tower funnel. We can hide that, and we have the forty-five degree and hide a ninety degree hide. And there's the vertical one hide. And the base hide and the fixture. Now we should see everything updating here. We can just get rid of those texts if they start to flood the screen too too badly. And yes, everything still looks okay. Yeah, the funnel is, is like rotated differently for the first one. Uh, like here you have this upper uh, stabilizer going like upwards, and, and here you have it going downwards. Uh, I don't know which which one is better. Which one looks better? I'm gonna have it going this way as well. No, it doesn't quite matter. Uh, let's leave it at this. Okay, so now, now that we have everything unwrapped, now we can paint some colors onto these guys. And like I said, um, I'm, I'm going to be painting the details later. Let's just paint some like some base colors onto these. So let's let's try something. Let's let's start with like a, um, uh, I would like to call it the base color as well, but like the the, the almost like fallback color for like s steel. And I think I'll want to want to color this ring with that one, and probably this fixture and the vertical vertical one with that and then I think like these angles and the bases uh, they will be this same green color that we have here on this on the uh, on the pylon um, usually what I do actually with objects like this I, I go in on a I hand paint uh, like edge highlights like this you can see these are hand painted that they look like they're, they're not very exact you can see it on, on 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 many objects. You have them on the on the cars as well, and and uh, uh, not on these sculpted ones though. Um, like you have you have them on this on this um, on these edges here, and probably on this on this machinery as well. Um, it gives it almost kind of like a paint painterly look which I kind of like but I don't do it on everything like um, like the, the the sculpted stuff is is really it, it sort of gets gets that look automatically if you if you paint like dirty colors in, in blender but on on these things that aren't so so detailed I go in and I sort of highlight these these edges and so I'm, I'm gonna do the same with these. Uh, but that's 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 hardly very interesting content. So let's not do do that right now. 
but yeah, it's going to look a little different than the other objects uh, until I do that. Um, and we can actually go in and have a look at the... Let's see, where where's the... That's not the one I want, I want this one. So it's probably in the research station blueprint. And if we open the preview and we look at the power pylon. So it's it's this one here, yes. Uh, I, I have a few few versions of it. I just want to make sure it's the right one. And so it's in the hydro plant folder. And these these folders here are the ones that actually get turned into pack files when you ship the game. So this would be in the hydro plant pack file. And in here we can look at it's probably in the hydro plant blender file. And let's see if we can find the thing. So power pylon is right there. Hello to you. And how is this material made? So shader editor, and we can look at power pylon. As you can see, it has uh, has actually quite quite a few things. So it has a base color, which is this. This is the green color that we'll be wanting for the for the base of the the base, and I think the the angles. And then we have secondary colors, which I think is just like this guy here. And so, yeah, that's just mixed on top of it. And uh, then we have the edge highlights. And if we look at the edge edge highlights, we have like uh, barbile and edge highlights are there. So here we go. This is the stuff that I, I paint like by hand. And and if we toggle this on and off, you can you can sort of you can see the the difference there. Uh, just a, a slight artistic thing that I like to do, and then then there's some wear and tear, like these scratches and and the dirt and and everything, that kind of stuff. And then we bake the whole thing into a texture, and that is the diffuse texture. Some objects have like other things as well, like normal maps and 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 specular maps and and whatnot. Like I think this this um, this tank here, for example, let's just duplicate that guy and and bring it over. You can see that there's like there's some some like highlights on this guy that I'll actually get rid of that as well. That like uh, it 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 has this sort of sheen that come off it, um, and and that's that's generated through um, a specular map. Um, and then you have the same thing here on these on these research modules here where, where there's like this is supposed to be like quite reflective metal uh, and so you want the you want the sort of the the dirt to be affecting how that how that sheen sort of how they reflect the things <coughs> um, and generally I I generate those maps in like a separate program afterwards so so we don't have to do that now even if we want it for these for these towers we can do it later <coughs> okay um, so what would be the base color then like we can even either go with this with this green color that's the base color and then and then paint the other colors on top or we can go the other way so what, what what should we do? What should we do? That's a good question. I mean, this is this is generated through some kind of. It has a noise. And a few RGBs, and it gives us this this sort of. 
slightly dirty looking green base color. Maybe we'll actually maybe we'll actually do this. I think I think this material like in itself will actually work quite well as as the material that we want to. So so right. So this is in hydro plant and material power pylon is what we want. So let's let's actually just take that and put it into our new file. Um, so we can actually we can get rid of that. Bye bye. Uh, it will still still be here though. Um, how do I do this? I I I'm always confused about how to unassign things in Blender because if we do all this, then it should. Should I think? Yeah, now it has like zero there, which means that it's 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 about to go away. And if we shut it down and reopen it, then it should have actually gone away now. Oh, I opened the wrong file. Mini transporter, and yeah, now we only have the default one. So now we can uh, we can uh, append from the hydro plant work hydro plant we want the material called power pylon and there we go and we'll just rename this funnel tower and now if we we actually um, we have to like individually assign it maybe but there aren't that many objects so it doesn't matter now it's going to look li really really weird and bad and not match because because it is still referencing those other work textures so we don't want that we can just we can actually just disable that for now disable the wear and tear and, and disable the highlights. So these are essentially the things that uh, I'll be I'll be painting in later. Uh, secondary colors is probably quite good to keep keep there, but we'll we'll want a different um, texture because, like I said, these are still referencing the old ones. We already created a folder for our uh, textures, so. Yeah, secondary colors. Let's let's create a new texture now, and again do like a two K one, and and call this funnel tower secondary colors. Um, we do need alpha, and it should be set to transparent, like so. So this is our texture, and we can we can store it here in. Under the work in the funnel tower textures folder, so boom. And now, if we actually select that, you'll see those those objects or those highlights go go away. And so, uh, let's think about what we what we wanted to do here. So, um, the base is is now fine because it was supposed to have have that that color and these angles as well and I think the majority of this is actually supposed to be um, the base gray color so to speak but now from like a technical perspective now the base color that the sort of underlying co color the one that we're starting with here is now this green color so the the steel green uh, steel gray color that well, that we were thinking about applying to these guys is actually the secondary color so we'll want to actually paint in these areas we want to paint now like a, a gray color so let's do that let's go into uh, nope not there here texture paint and uh, Mm -mm -mm. And we can just take uh, 
some some gray color here let's just do that for example actually we can just use them here as well so we have we have fill because we want to fill it out completely with that for now add a color palette and add that gray color there as a test and then we then we can uh, oh purple and diffuse yeah not that uh, funnel tower secondary colors that's what we want so boom and, and now you see that it has actually filled in those colors there. And we can take this one, texture paint, and boom. So that's that's good. Um, then we want to color parts of this guy with that color. So we we'll want these these fixtures here on the on the side. And probably the ring, right? Like those should also be that color. And here, if we select this to only affect the selected areas, then, then we can do this. And now, now those parts are are colored like that. So that's good. Okay, let's save that file. And um, and then what do we want? Maybe these should be some kind of, of of slightly slightly almost like yellowish to sort of sort of highlight them. Um, let's get rid of of these two because they're they're essentially done for now. And then these these like pad stabilizers here, I think should be black and also these these parts of the of the two pr protruding stabilizers should be black as well or not necessarily exactly black because you almost never want to do make anything exactly black but but quite dark anyway so let's bring this down to something like that and just add it to the palette we can we can tweak it later and we'll select select these parts like so get the backside as well and then go to texture paint and boom that maybe that's a little too too dark I don't know we'll we'll see I think I think it's a little too dark let's let's actually let's go up a little bit and add, add that to the palette as well yeah I think that that looks better That looks better. And then I I don't exactly know what to do about these, like what what colors these should be, but let's let's make them something, and we can, we can tweak it later. So texture paint, only selected once. I think I want something like slightly slightly yellowish. So let's go fully saturated first, and. I'm not saturated, but but light. Sorry. Maybe something like that. Does that look look sensible? I think that looks sensible. Yeah, I think that looks like something we can live with for now. We're gonna have to look at it in in game to determine if that's if that's good or not. Okay, so. <clears throat> So we can already use this as it is. Uh, we just we just leave these two, the edge highlights and the wear and tear, disabled. Because if we if we if we do if we actually enable this now, then we're gonna we're, well we're, we're not actually we're seeing some something here appear. But uh, it's it's referencing the old or the or the power pylon textures, so we don't want that. So we just leave them disabled until we have proper edge highlights and wear and tear for this one. And the wear and tear for this is probably going to be like like rust spots and whatnot. So let's create uh, let's create a new new texture now, which will hold the the diffuse texture for the funnel towers. So funnel 
tower diffuse. We don't need alpha for that. Um, we can just we can just save it here. And typically, what I do is I um, I store one in the work folder, um, which is we can fake a user. Nothing is actually gonna gonna really use this, but still um, keep it here. This is the one that we will bake to, and this unconnected texture. Uh, node here is just so that we can actually select this so it is funnel tower diffuse and then let's see if I remember how to do this so we select all of these guys right and then we go to the render options and we need to select cycles so that we get this bake option here and we bake diffuse and only the color Margin is 16 pixels. That that is probably fine, but we'll have to see. And that should be fine. Then we just need to make sure this is highlighted or active. It's kind of a weird way to select where to actually target your bake, but that's how Blender does it, and then we bake. And I'm doing it on a CPU now, which is a little slow but this is a simple simple material so it should be fine now you can see the different parts of the object appearing in the texture slot and obviously it looks kind of boring and and almost completely without details the only parts that actually have details are these green green parts and that's because because they use this um, this noise to generate this this variation between the two green colors while these other parts are completely single colored um, so yeah we'll, we'll we'll paint some some details into those at a later point and now what I you typically do is once I have this baked diffuse which is referenced by the, the blender file I actually just save a copy what did I select actually? Save a copy. Right now. Okay, window fly file view, yeah. The, the, the window is slightly weird, weirdly named. But anyway, funnel tower diffuse. And and now that we saved it outside the work folder, it will appear here. And and it will also appear here if we if we search for it. Funnel tower diffuse is here, and, and this is now where it, it tells us that the original size is 2k and we can just make it make it 1k and and we'll probably want to compress it as well so just make it bc7 and srgb and uh, and it will it will have converted it already uh, blah 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 yes there we go so 1k texture with 11 mip map levels as bc7 srgb there we go and now we should have the texture so now we can create a material uh, that uses that texture so let's save this and uh, actually we can shut it down and uh, Since we copied the, the, the material from the, the the power pile, and maybe we can just copy the the uh, oh, sorry the yeah the blender material, maybe we can just copy the basis material as well, and and follow the th the same same logic here. So power pile and basis material. It's a very simple material. Uses uh, it has the default passes for shadow map and ambient occlusion. Then it has one pass for the opaque, which uses the diffuse bin shader, no normal maps or anything for this one. Pipeline state is the is the normal one. Um, it has some constant buffer where you can set colors and, and specular power and, and whatnot. And it has a texture resource and a sampler. And so this is where we want to plug in our texture. Let's copy that and put it in here. 
and we'll just leave those as they are for now. We can go in and and, and um, change them if we want to. And so we get this power pile and bin material. And now if we if we go to the to the asset browser and back to the research station blueprint. We can plug this guy in here. And voila. Here we have the material applied to our to our funnel. We'll just do the same for these other ones. That should be green. This should also be green. This should be a slightly different gray. Looks almost exactly the same as the, as the default gray. Well, that's fine. That's, that's actually what we want. Okay, and now, um, like I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, blueprints don't auto-update. That's one reason why I have the, the preview there in the asset browser. We just need to reload the, the level and we'll have the towers here. With the correct material applied and now that they have the correct material applied now we can just uh, modify the, the the material however we want and it will it will auto update here in the editor so so the 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 workflow is quite nice all right just have a bit of coffee okay so First things first, do we are we are we quite happy with these base colors now? Do they look like we can live with them? Like this this yellow let's actually get rid of those. This yellow color here is actually matches this this boom quite quite nicely, but the, the boom is obviously a placeholder, so so that doesn't matter and, and the green color underneath this first tower is not supposed to be this green. And we're gonna go in and change that probably quite a bit. So yeah, I think this I think this will work. I think this will work. I think these fixtures here look really boring without like lots of rust and details and whatnot. But that's kind of to be expected. And these these pads here look way too dark now that they don't have any kinds of edge highlights or or, or anything. But I think as, as base colors go, this is probably quite all right. This is probably something that we can live with. What about these upper towers? If we like, if we come here, actually, let's let's um yeah. Since the last video, I moved these these patrol um, patrol objects up above ground again which means that our level now um, exports that's that's amazing yeah and that means that we can just we can just play it we can see how it plays uh, actually I'll just put the master volume down to zero and uh, we can get this lancer here, for example. So, I feel like it's it's a pretty good way to, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's a pretty good way to, to determine if something looks good, if you just if you sort of you come driving towards it and, and like look at it like a, sort of out of the corner of your eye to like see if like does that stand stand out way too much or or way too little and i think like my intuitive reaction to this is that it looks like those guys are fitting into the environment quite well We can drive up here. I like this area because it has like multiple paths that you can take. And this is where the first combat in the demo will will occur. So it's quite an important area in that sense. Important that it plays well. This area doesn't play well at all yet, but um, yeah, 
here. We're gonna need to have to to add some detail on top of these rocks. Like this really looks like like yeah, the level just ends here. Add some uh, some rocks and trees and whatnot, and uh, maybe we actually also have enough terrain under that rock so that we can just bring it up and and, and paint it a little bit. And because the terrain is is it rises up to such a level here that you can you can clearly see the top side of the rocks here. And so we don't want it to look like it. It is really the end of the level. But yeah, this looks okay. Uh, I mean, this middle tower looks weird that it, when it uses like two two different kinds of angles. Oh yeah, here's the the, the collision of this is not super super. Uh, it doesn't follow the the visual terrain super well. I need to fix that probably. Um, yeah, it looks a little weird, uh, that one. But that's kind of what I was going for. It's supposed to look a little weird. Like, what? what is that? Uh, and, and another benefit is that it actually moves like one of those legs a little backwards so that it doesn't fall off the edge. Uh, yeah. So I think this this works. Uh, yeah, this this dropship is, is standing here because I was thinking that this this might be this is supposed to be a pretty open open place as well. Maybe maybe this could be actually like a helipad or something. Um, it is it is large enough that it it might it might make sense that these people would have like a helipad here. Um, or initially I was thinking that this would be a helipad, but this is like a. a a much much tighter space so maybe maybe this is just like an, a cargo storage area and then and then this this is where they would bring down their their drop ships to to ship it off to other parts of the colony you can actually drive into this guy Yes, <clears throat> and speaking of, we need to actually add collision to all of these things pretty soon. Um, like the pit obviously doesn't have any kind of collision. You can just drive into the into the into the pit in the terrain and and get stuck here. Can I actually get out? I don't think I can. But yeah, well, we need to add, add collisions to this mesh, and then also to to these guys. Maybe we don't actually add any collision to this object itself because we might we probably don't need to add collision to these. Like you, you, you can't you can't ever reach them, and so it might just be enough to add like a separate set of blockers for this one. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to we'll have to see. We'll have to see. <clears throat> Let's get this car instead. Yeah, and then and then based on what this ends up looking like, we can we can then flesh out these these larger funnel towers to look cooler more interesting I mean it's it's a little silly to call oh here we have a problem actually yeah um, yeah we have to we have to like we have to keep the the, the cutoff distance for objects in mind uh, we have now the the smaller objects of those mini towers get cut out at this distance and if we drive a little closer you should see them see see them coming in so there we go and I kind of like this the silhouette of of the top tower here and this distance it looks cool but it obviously it doesn't look very cool when it looks like this so 
so yeah that's something to to fix uh, yeah and it's a bit silly to call those like mini towers uh, since they're they're actually quite big now but compared to these truly huge ones then they are aren't that that big and so I, I, I think like the the, the the lore is that those objects would be sort of physically traveling in a, a straight line. It's not like a teleport or something like that. Um, it's more like a, a, a very powerful magnetic field that allows you to transport things at at very um, very high velocities in a straight line and and kind of controllably stop them. Uh, so. I mean, I can, I can decide how that works. I'm, I make this stuff up. Uh, but, um, but the the idea would be that these objects that they that they transport through these rings, they they would actually have to physically fit through them because they're actually like literally being being forced through these rings. And so, one reason why this so-called mini transporter wouldn't have been enough after a while is that they. They can only fit so large objects through this, and the, the the larger one would be able to transport much larger things, like I don't know, maybe like dropships. A dropship probably doesn't fit through there, does it? I don't think so. Let's have a look. No, at least not in its current state. But maybe, maybe if they took it apart. Then it would fit. We anyway. Anyway, what is the next step then? I think probably. Um, probably think start starting to think about this terrain here. Uh, underneath the towers uh, would be a pretty good next step um, but maybe I'll actually I'll end this video here and, and and put that in a separate video because these tend to get very long as you might have noticed and I think it makes sense to like do one thing in one and then and then do another thing in another video so this actually didn't end up being the last video for this set piece but that's fine and People can decide if they if they want to continue watching or or not. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.